will ship that gold and silver to you straight to your door, or they will help you convert an IRA or an eligible 401k into an IRA backed by gold and silver. Through a tax loophole, you can convert your retirement savings tied to the stock market into an IRA backed by physical precious metals. And to simply celebrate your first 100 days on Coast to Coast through September 30th, on qualifying orders of gold or silver, they will give you a free safe to store it all in. Get your free info kit on precious metals and this special offer by texting COAST to 989898. And with thousands of satisfied customers, an A-plus rating with a Better Business Bureau, and countless five-star reviews, Birch Gold can help you protect your savings. Text COAST to 989898. Remember this, COAST to 989898. Real people, real stories. I have acute eczema. I have tried every cream and ointment that you can imagine. It was pretty miserable. So I started taking a Polyvora, and at this point, I don't want to ever be without it. Our little dog developed this lymph problem. But the chemotherapy lasted for six months. He started developing more uh, lymph nodes that were swelled up. So I thought I'd just try kind of work. The lymph nodes started to go down, swelling dead. Then I took him into the vet to have him checked out, and there was no signs at all inside. My cat had issues that developed in his eye, so my veterinarian said, you know what, let's go ahead and remove the eye. I heard the carnival and advertising, so I said, you know what, I'm going to order this product. They did all the tests. I kid you not. This product saved his eye. Call 866-836-8735. That's 866-836-8735. Or visit carnivore.com. That's C-A-R-N-I-V-O-R-A.com. And welcome back to Coast to Coast. George Nori with you along with Mac Maloney. Mac, on your podcast, you've talked a lot about ex-intelligence agents. Tell me about what their thoughts are about some of this. Well, when it comes to the uh, UFO and disclosure and things like that, um, I can tell you that this is something that the U.S. government has been paying attention to, let's say, for a year longer than that they will admit. And uh, one of the people we've had on the show uh, told us about this instance where um, they would bring, on a, on a you know, semi-annual basis, they would bring people from all different aspects of the government in to a kind of workshop the problem. So, in other words, There'd be someone there from the UN, someone there from the State Department, Defense, the scientific community, and so on. And they would give them a problem, and then they would come back with their solution, like the next day after kind of breaking into groups and studying it and so on. Um, and usually it's things like um, if terrorists took over a cruise ship or if terrorists hijacked an airplane. But this one time that he went, uh, the, the problem, let's say, was the exercise of what would happen, uh, you know, if the U.S. government found the UFO, and, and what would the scientific community, how would they respond to it, how would the State Department, the diplomacy part of the government, how would they respond to it, how would the Defense Department respond to it, and I just remember him saying that the Defense Department, all they wanted to know was whether it could be weaponized, and the scientific community person who uh, was a representative he, he, this is strange, but he said, I want to go up to it, I want to lick it to see if it's real. So it's, a, it, it's proof that, you know, they've been looking into this, they've been paying attention to it, you know, and, and workshopping it with, like, people, you know, that's pretty high up in these agencies. So it, it, at the very least, it wasn't far from their minds all these years. No, not at all. Let's tell us about the story of the murderous goat man. What is that? Well, he was a, um, still around down in uh, Beltsville, uh, Maryland. Um, there's a bridge there that people see him, you know, frequently if you, uh, you know, if you, if you have the courage to go in there, it's kind of in a back section in the woods. Um, it looks like a goat. Uh, there are stories about uh, how he's uh, uh, done things like attacked uh, teenagers who are talking along his lane. He's uh, gone and searches down, um, uh, people's pets and shows them uh, this, kind of some pictures of them and then you know, you're not quite sure what you're looking at 
but the the origin of the myth is that uh, of Scorpion is that there was a scientist in a nearby uh, facility there, the Beltsville Agricultural Research Center, which is owned by the USDA, and uh, something got mixed up with an experiment he was doing with goats. Uh, something got into his DNA, turned him into goat, and he's been uh, kind of angry about it ever since. That's a great story. The Blood Beast of North Carolina. Well, once again, it's one of these yeah, instances where, where people see um, these strange creatures. I mean, they see them all the time. People, you know, think Bigfoot is like the only strange creature out there, but, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're not. Um, the Blood Beast was just a beast kind of strange looking thing that, you know, always seems to have blood on it. One attack people, attack animals. And then just like disappear, um, you know, just one of these entities that, that you know, is not of Earth, where they're from, you know, who knows. The man eating tree of Madagascar. Right, there's actually a tree there that, um, uh, you know, it has um, lots of vines with the sticky stuff on it, and it, it, it's just like one of those plants that's a fly catcher, it'll bring in any kind of you know, uh, an animal or even, you know, a small human and wrap them up to the tree and then, you know, digest them very, very slowly. Oh, jeez. Is that a true story? Um, they say it is. What has been in your career? Do you travel much, Mac? To uh, not not that? really. No, I do most of my research out of my, out of my home. Oh, you do? Okay. Mm -hmm. What has been some of the strangest things that I mean, you put a lot of them in, in the book that you didn't put in there? For whatever reason. Oh boy. Well, see, the way we did it was that you know we we probably wind up with twice as much stuff uh, that actually came out in, in the book, and you know, some of them some of them you just you know, some of them just like too way out, you know, just just too way out there, and didn't have a lot of documentation on them, and, and, and so then you know when they came the same time to figure out what's going to go in and what's not. Um, yeah, we we kind of put those aside, and those are things like, mm -hmm. um, you know, phantom, um, you know, uh, bomber groups bombing England during World War II. That you know, there were ghost planes and things like that. Mm -hmm. And just there were just one or two lines that wasn't enough to build on, wasn't enough documentation as I say, those two way out. And you wanted some things that you could uh, really sink your teeth into with some reality. Yes. Right, and, and, and have, you know, two or three sources that, you know, this is, you know, something that people know about, you know, some of them, a lot of them come from myths, but a lot of them, you have people who have, like, been, you know, eyewitnesses seeing these strange creatures, you know, running around and, um, and then just, like, disappearing or acting like animals and things like that. Uh, I was amazed how many stories like that are around. Did you get many ghost stories that came your way? Yeah, some ghost stories, some creepy ghost stories, um, there was one I, I know that uh, happened up in New Hampshire where this um, this woman had just moved to this small town in New Hampshire, went out one night and um, uh, heard like a jazz band playing, was so kind of taken with uh, one of the people in the band and then she came home and then she um, you know went to sleep and she was awoken by the sound of a saxophone. She looked out on her lawn and there was this guy up dressed all in white playing the saxophone. And beautifully, and um, the next day she contacted her neighbor and said, you know, did you hear that last night? And she huh. what she saw, and she said, oh, my brother was a saxophone player, but he passed away like 10 years ago. Oh, my gosh. I bet, and did she describe to her what this guy looked like? It seemed to be him, yes. It was right. him. Yep. Right. How did that stuff happen? I don't know. You know, we talk on the show a lot about, you know, what ghosts really are and what could they be, and... They, we, you know, we, we can only speculate. We never come up here, can't come up with any definitive answers, but a lot of people see ghosts, you know. I think a certain kind of person will see a ghost and others won't, but um, they all can't be made up stories, you know. They all can't be hoaxes or, or dreams or something like that. So uh, just on the virtual uh, number of quantity of ghost stories we've heard over the years, if just one of them is true, then they might all be true. That's right. Mac, do you believe in life after death? Um, well, a little, little, so. little hesitancy there. I, I had to think about that one. I mean, I hope it's, I hope it's true. You know, um, it would be nice. I mean, if it's not, how will we know? But it just seems like, um, you know, we're here 
Hunter and to, to, to do something, you know, and, and it's just like one step, and um, and then we go somewhere else. I mean, Einstein himself said one of the things that fascinated him about just everything that goes on on Earth is that you know everything lasts longer than we do. Rocks and trees and dirt and so on. So in, by comparison, you know, humans are on Earth just for you know 70 or 80 years at that. And he said, I, and his thoughts were, I don't think that. You know, whoever created all this would put it all together just to have us live for 80 years, you know, in this. And, and he seemed to think that because of that, we would go on somewhere else. So I hope he's right. I got a call uh, from a police officer during the Open Lines one show years ago. And we were just talking about strange things. And he said that he and his partner had a call to get to a house because of a heart attack that time. And they got there before the EMTs got there. So they knock on the door, a little old man lets them in. They go right in, rushing, and they see somebody lying down on their stomach. They rolled him over, and it was the little old man who had just let them in. Oh, wow. They turn around and he's gone. Yeah. Yeah. I've heard of stories, you know, like that as well. And, and also really kind of, kind of creepy is people who get phone calls, uh, from people that they find out later on have passed away. Yes, you know that happens a lot. That that is very strange, and and, and the way that the people re interact with them on the phone, you know, saying you know, a lot of times people say we haven't been able to be, been, able, been able to get a hold of you lately. And Where are you? And it's always like, oh, I'm in a good place. I'm you know, we're having fun and stuff. And then it turns out that they that they actually passed away. So phone calls from the grave, you know. And the caller ID is like zero 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 or something like that. Something, yeah. Yeah, those are those are really creepy to me. Do you ever get any stories or did you on the devils or demons or things like that? Uh, yeah, there's a place, uh, I know we did a couple things. I know there's a place in uh, Kansas, a small graveyard that people swear is uh, like a portal to hell. This has been going on for a long time, back to you know, going back to the like years. But people have reported to see, you know, Lucifer himself oh, right, rising up from this grave, little graveyard. And um, there's a lot of documentation about that over the years. So now uh, people go there like on Halloween and stuff, and uh, people do say that they, you know, see something going on in this place. And, you know, if it's the devil or Lucifer, and I don't know if something's happening there. I'm not sure I'd want to see the devil. It's probably not good luck, yes. No. Not to. Absolutely not. Now, and what about, uh, back to these curses again, have you had anybody ever put a curse on you? <laughs> not that I know of, to tell you the truth. Uh, maybe in my football pool or something, but um, uh, no, no, I got my fingers crossed that that never happens. Uh, Mac Maloney with us, his website is his name, MacMaloney.com, all linked up at CursedToCursedAim.com. A couple of his nonfiction books include Mac Maloney's Haunted Universe, Beyond Area 51, UFOs in Overtime. What are some of the novels you've written, the military thrillers that you like? Um, well, I, I write this uh, series called Wingman. I've been doing it for quite a while. I just finished um, number 21. And uh, what that really is is um, it started so long ago that the, the pitch was Mad Max in an airplane. If you remember the Mad Max film. I sure do. With uh, uh, Mel Gibson, right? Mel Gibson, right. So basically just put a character like that in, in a jet fighter. And, um, you know, he um, tries to, uh, he's continually saving America in uh, this kind of post-World War III world, apocalyptic world. So that's been going on for a long time. And um, I've also written a, a series called Chopper Off, which is about special operations forces in, um, you know, in helicopters and um, things like that. That's what I've been doing, you know, over the past 20 years or so. Fascinating work. What uh, what do you enjoy the most about what you do, Matt? When I finish the book, I'm uh, huh. that's the best part. It is. You turn it into the publisher and it's done. Right. I love that. Have uh, some of your books been turned into movies? Um, not yet. You know, they've been um, auctioned um, a few times. Uh, where uh, that's basically where they give a little piece of money and, and they have six months to either turn it into a script or not. And uh, every time that that happened, uh, they would come back and said uh, it would be too expensive to do one of your novels on the screen, which uh, even in days like of CGI these days, um, that cuts the 
the cross though. Yeah. But um, right, it would still be um, it, would, it would still be a huge, huge kind of undertaking. Right. So, but you know, never say never. And I think the days of the really expensive movies are kind of gone, don't you? Right, right. You know, things have changed like over the past ten years for sure. Um, you're not going to see movies like Cleopatra anymore, or you know the uh, the Ben Hur, or anything like that. It's too expensive to make. To make. But this would be something. It was just the type of books that I read. It would be it would have to be something on the scale like Top Gun, and you know that's still an expensive uh, piece of pie to put out there. So, but as I say, you know, never say never. Exactly. Can you rule out Russian or Chinese of these uh, objects we've been talking about? Do I think that they might be from Russia or China? Right. Uh, no, I don't think so because... Me either. Yeah, uh, first of all, the, the UFO videos that we saw three years ago, which kind of started all this, uh, you know, they had some years on them, you know, one of them was in 2004, so you're going back away there, and um, um, it, it, it's just very, very unlikely that uh, I don't think Russia is even in the running, but let's say the Chinese. For them to have some kind of technology back then, in 2004, we would know about it by now, you know? They would have used it on us, I right. think, in some yeah. form of fashion. for sure. Interesting. Have you ever seen the ghost yourself? No, I've heard a couple, so I've been in houses where... Really? Yeah, yeah. I've been, um, when I grew up in, um... We were just a part of Boston. We lived in a in a old house, which was the family house. They used to live up, sleep up in the attic, kind of room up there. And uh, you know, if you live in a whole old house, you can kind of tell the sound of each step. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I was up there once. I heard someone come up the stairs in the middle of the night. Not sure. You know, my one of my brothers or my parents would kind of come in and tell me something. Who knows? But no one ever came in the door. Yeah. But I heard it, so that's the closest I can uh, get to seeing your ghost. I've heard one. I thought you were from Boston. There's a slight little Bostonian accent, so. Can you tell? Yeah. Talk to cars, right? <laughs> well, yes. And my mother was born in Fitchburg. Well, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not too far. But stay with us, Mac. We're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back and take a hour of phone calls with you. Questions for you about some of your work, about the UFOs, and about some of the haunted places. Or... Share a story with us, folks. Something that you've got that you want the world to know about. Also, don't forget to sign up for our free YouTube channel. When you go to YouTube, just type in Coast to Coast AM Official and subscribe. It's free and have some fun. We'll be back in a moment on Coast to Coast AM. Mac Maloney, our guest, his website, MacMaloney.com. Back in a moment on Coast to Coast AM. Find out more about tonight's guest. Log on to CoastToCoastAM.com. Save lives. To learn more, visit COVID19.ca.gov. Murder in Illinois, the new true crime podcast. 
asked an attempt to answer the question, who really killed the Vaughn family? In 2007, Chris Vaughn's wife and three children were found murdered in their SUV. Chris was arrested and convicted, though he claims to have no memory of the events. Both the prosecution's theory and the defense's theory are incorrect. That's not how it happened. Listen to Murder in Illinois on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcast. Hey, it's Dean Sharp. I am so proud that since Duffy Power came to KFI, lots of homes like yours now have emergency backup power. It's an incredibly smart and affordable thing to do. Okay, but the pandemic has everything in short supply. So right now, my best generator advice is don't wait. Call Duffy today so they can make sure your life won't be interrupted during the next outage. Dial pound 250 on your cell and say Duffy Power. Pound 250, Duffy Power, or find them on the web at DuffyPower.com. We follow the news. You follow us. listening to me with your eyes closed. Be honest. Please don't be driving if that's the way you're listening. Good morning. Welcome to your Friday. Welcome to the weekend. KFI AM 640 Live everywhere on the iHeartRadio app. Here's what's just ahead on your wake-up call. LA County's health director says while cases of COVID-19 are still high, look at this. The rate of new cases seems to be leveling out. Organizers of the effort to recall L.A. County D.A. George Gaston say he would lose by a big margin if the election were held today. And California regulators have shut down one of the state's biggest hydroelectric power plants because there's not enough water to run it. 505 will talk with ABC's Elizabeth Schulte. Well, Congress's nonpartisan scorekeeper, I guess you could call it found that the roughly $1 trillion infrastructure bill, remember that was not supposed to widen the federal budget, would in fact widen the federal budget by over $250 billion over the next 10 years. Is this a big enough hurdle to solve? I know it seems crazy when we're talking this kind of money, but we'll see. So let's start with some of these stories coming out of the KFI 24-hour newsroom. L.A. County health officials say new cases of COVID-19 may be slowing. Early data show new cases seem to be slowing, but Delta variant cases are still high. Although cases have increased by about 550% over the past month, hospitalizations increased by about 290%. County Health Director Barbara Ferrer says there's been a spike in cases among younger children, but their severity of illness has been low because most kids 12 and older in L.A. County have been vaccinated. Steve Gregory, KFI News. Well, the union representing L.A. County Sheriff's deputy says it was blindsided by an executive order mandating COVID-19 vaccination for all county workers. President of the Association for the L.A. Deputies Sheriff's Association, James Wheeler, says they found out about it on Twitter. He says the Board of Supervisors should have collaborated with everyone affected by the decision. Supervisor Hales of Police issued the order late Wednesday saying rising COVID numbers mean immediate action is needed. All 110,000 county employees will have to be vaccinated by October 1st. Okay, and I'm going to agree. You find out about it on Twitter. Shouldn't there have been an, an email, a memo, something? <laughs> Members of the Brown Berets are asking people in Los Angeles to support the fight against police brutality. The Brown Berets and other supporters say LA County Sheriff's deputies are killing too many young Latino and black men for no reason. Leah Garcia is the mother of a man who was shot and killed by a deputy during a traffic stop. She says she wants justice. They took my son away from me. Like they took so many of our the groups gathered yesterday to push for L.A. County Sheriff Alex Villanueva to resign. Claudia Stefanian, KFI News. Some local immigration rights activists say people need to vote against recalling Governor Newsom. Juan Gutierrez with the Full Rights for Immigrants Coalition says voting in support of the recall will lead to a political disaster. If they can take down uh, Governor Gavin Newsom in progressive California, they can certainly do it elsewhere 
The group gathered outside the Ronald Reagan State Building yesterday to protest against the recall effort. Well, speaking of recalls, organizers of the recall effort against L.A. County George Dixon Jackson, the DA, say he would lose by a wide, a wide margin if the election were held today. Tim Leinberger, with the Recall George Gascon campaign, says a poll done in late July found 42% of voters would vote to recall, compared to 31% who said they wouldn't. George Gascon's personal favorability is underwater. 34% of voters had an unfavorable opinion of him, compared to just 17% with a favorable opinion. His job approval rating is also pretty dismal. 53% of the 650 voters polled are Democrats and 17% are Republicans. Recall organizers have until October 27th to gather 579,000 valid signatures. D.A. Gascon has said the people behind his recall are more interested in punishment than justice. All right, we come back, we're going to talk with ABC's Elizabeth Schulze about the bipartisan infrastructure bill. It wasn't supposed to widen the deficit, but according to the Congre Congressional Budget Office, which is nonpartisan as well, um, it's going to widen it quite a bit. So we'll talk about that hurdle with her in just a second. Right now, let's say good morning to Dave Joseph checking out a stall on the 10 in downtown LA. It's eastbound at Hoover Street, Jennifer. That stall now being cleared from lanes, but you're still slow from Vermont Avenue, Atwater Village. Caltrans work on the two northbound between the 5 and the 134. That right lane is shut down. It'll be that way until 6 o'clock. That's for electrical work. And in Garden Grove, having earlier crash on the 22 eastbound at Magonia Street, everything there has been cleared from lanes. KFI in the sky helps get you there faster. I'm Dave Joseph. 505 on your wake-up call. Elizabeth Schulze, good morning to you. So let's talk about the bipartisan infrastructure bill. It was not supposed to widen the budget deficit, but then you have the Congressional Budget Office, also nonpartisan, that stepped in and said, well, let's take a look at those numbers. Hey, good morning to you. Yeah, so the CBO, which is, you know, in charge of determining how much legislation will cost, they said this is not fully paid for. They said this bipartisan infrastructure bill will add $256 billion to the deficit over the next 10 years. So not exactly how it has been presented as something that wouldn't increase the deficit. It, remember, kind of, the reason there's been so much back and forth on this bill has been the question of how to pay for it. And Republicans had drawn that red line saying they didn't want any tax hikes to pay for it. They did, also didn't want that provision to boost IRS tax enforcement. So what ultimately ended up being in this final package is sort of just reallocating funding in other places, some changes to some rules that will raise some money, but it's clearly not enough to offset the cost. That said, it, I, it doesn't look like this will be enough to derail the progress of the bill altogether as it kind of moves forward in the next few days. Yeah, and that's what's so interesting about it. I think for you and I and everybody who's just a normal person sitting around, you think of something increasing a budget that's going up by $250 billion, and you think, oh my God, how could they ever possibly get over that hurdle? But I was looking yesterday, and it was Rob Portman, who's a Republican, and Kristen Cinema, who's a Democrat, two of them, and they both still said, nope, go forward with this legislation. That's exactly right. Those two negotiators kind of preempted, or at least expected, that the CBO might not have this be fully paid for. They, they kind of see the things they seem to have this coming. And so they said, let's just go ahead. They, they're also trying to make the case that this bill is going to pay for itself because of the investments that it's making, and while that might not be reflected in some of the kind of outlays in the bill itself, it will be worth it down the line in the long run. And so far, it looks like 10 Republicans are buying into that. They're on board with that kind of notion that this is just the kind of investment that we need to make. Remember, this is hard infrastructure. It's roads, bridges, rails, internet, things that generally there has been a bipartisan consensus on. So it looks like they are kind of okay with saying even if the numbers don't completely shake out right now, it's going to be worth it. Uh, down the line. Are those 10 part of the 17 that joined the 50 Democrats in the procedural vote last week? Very likely. It's, it's unlikely to see anyone who didn't want to say to go forward with the debate that they would then vote in favor of the bill. But remember, you know, all they need is 10. So even if they lose a couple because of the CBO scoring, we did get a couple of statements from Republicans who were a little bit hesitant after these numbers came out. As long as they can keep the at least 10, they're going to be okay, and that's the that's the kind of way that the senators are talking for now. The Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer couldn't get his, everything together for a vote last night. At one point, that had been the hope to kind of just get this over with. I mean, honestly, they're not used to working this 
late into August in the Senate. This is a pretty busy uh, summer month for them here. Uh, but they they didn't have the, they clearly didn't have the consensus to do that last night. But he is kind of acting as though this could get rolled with a procedural vote on Saturday, maybe even go all the way through in the next uh, two days here. All right, all right, we'll be watching for that. And just before you go, has the White House commented on sort of the the scorecard or the the math that came out from the CBO? Not yet, and we're obviously going to be pressing them about that today. I'm at the White House, and I, I can tell you, I've, I've already asked them. We'll be asking again. Uh, the president speaking this morning about the jobs report that'll be out in just a short time here. So undoubtedly, he's going to be getting some questions about these numbers, since he was the one who also said it, it was faithful. Probably from you. All right, Elizabeth, thank you so I will much. I guarantee that. <laughs> okay, sounds That's good. Fun. Have a great one. See you later. That's ABC's Elizabeth Schulte. All right, possibly this weekend. You know, if they here's my thing, is unless there's going to be some big debate over it, why why are we waiting? Just go forward with it. If we've got a foregone conclusion, stop beating around the bush, people. We got enough stuff to do. You have more fish to fry. That's one fish. Go. All right, let's get back to some of these other stories coming out of the KFI 24-hour newsroom. A brush fire in the Angeles National Forest has burned about 50 acres and is 45% contained. The fire was started by a burning car near Mount Baldy on Tuesday afternoon. Firefighting helicopters were used to help crews on the ground to douse the hot spot. The fire burning in Northern California since mid-July has burned more than 360,000 acres, an area larger than Los Angeles. Plymouth County Sheriff Todd John says it has also destroyed 100 homes in the historic Gold Rush town of Greenville. Despite efforts of firefighters, aerial resources, and law enforcement, the fire spread into the community of Greenville and caused mass destruction. Firefighters say drought conditions in Northern California are making it even harder to contain the fire. But, I know, I know, I'm trying to find any, any little silver lining that I can. Just think about this compared to Paradise, where, you know, almost 90 people died. In this fire, we have not heard of one death yet. So all I can think is that maybe, granted it's in an area that's going to be a lot easier to get people in and out of. It's right on Highway 89, so there's a lot of, you know, kind of, um, kind of, if you don't know where Highway 89 is, let's just say it's sort of California border with Nevada near Reno, in that area. Um, and so there's, there is a lot more space to get people in and out of than there was in Paradise, where it was one way in, one way out. That could have helped. There could have been a lot of lessons learned from the campfire that we're already seeing being implemented in this particular fire. But anyway, I was just I was heartened at least to see that we hadn't seen loss of life yet. California regulators have shut down one of the state's biggest hydroelectric power plants because there's not enough water to run it. The plant at the Oroville Dam Reservoir in Northern California was taken offline yesterday because the water has dropped to its lowest level ever. The plant can produce enough electricity to power 80,000 homes and businesses. If you haven't seen the befores and after of Lake Oroville, if you just want to see what, what it looks like right now, if you just Google Lake Oroville before and after or then and now, whatever, uh, you, you're going to see the footprint of what the lake used to look like. I mean, it is a action of itself. It's a shadow of itself. Spirit Airlines says it expects to cancel about half of its flights today and passengers should anticipate cancellations into next week. CEO Ted Christie says it's because of a combination of bad weather, staffing shortages, and technology issues. When we started canceling, our crews got dislocated through the system. They were in the wrong places at the wrong time. And we needed to start to build that puzzle back together again. He says Spirit has canceled about 1,800 flights since Sunday. Well, Hollywood is getting back on track. Film LA says filming in the area has returned to pre-COVID-19 levels. The nonprofit agency that coordinates film permitting in LA says on-location shoots between April and June reached their highest numbers since late 2019. The president of the agency says with COVID cases rising, though, it's not clear whether these kinds of levels will be sustainable. But he says the industry's commitment to community, cast, and crew safety will remain. Deborah Mark, KFI News. Two people have been arrested and three others were taken to the hospital when a police chase ended with a car crashing into power poles in Echo Park. The video of this is on Conway's Instagram page if you want to see it. It's one of the most um, spectacular in a bad way crashes I have ever seen. 
The chase started in Glendale just before 5.30 yesterday when police tried to pull the car over for a traffic stop. The driver kept going, led officers on a high-speed chase through Atwater Village and Echo Park. That's where so the driver comes around a corner, loses control, and starts to go on his side. And that's when you see him slam into this power pole. Spark, car flips on its hood. Five people inside gave themselves up to police. I don't know how they survive. It's amazing. So again, it's on Conway's Instagram page. Six people have been killed in a plane crash in Alaska. The U.S. Coast Guard says the sightseeing plane's emergency alert was activated yesterday morning, and the wreckage of the plane was found hours later. The Coast Guard says there were no survivors. Police in New York City say they've arrested someone in connection with the hit-and-run death of actor Lisa Baines. They say they've charged a man with causing the death of Baines, who was hit by a scooter or motorcycle when she was crossing a street in June. The actor is best known for her part in Gone Girl. She died 10 days after the accident. Well, the U.S. has won the gold medal in women's beach volleyball at the Olympics. Yes, at the Olympics. Alex Kleinman of Manhattan Beach and April Rouse of Costa Mesa beat Australia in straight sets 21-15 to 21-16. This was Kleinman's first Olympics. Ross competed at the Games in 2012-2016, winning silver and bronze. And the U.S. women's basketball team is into the gold medal games at the Olympics with a big win against Serbia. The U.S. won today's semifinal 79-59. If they win the gold, it will be their seventh straight games title. So, ladies, we'll talk more about the Olympics coming up at 5.50 with ABC's Jim Ryan. All right, when we come back, we're going to talk with Jack Hagerman, who is Vice President of Community Relations at the Pasadena Humane Society, because I want to follow up on a story that Deborah Mark filed earlier this week about pandemic pet regret. And I promise we won't be judgy, or we're not going to look down on you if you are one of those people who adopted a pet during the start of the pandemic, but all of a sudden you thought to yourself, I can't do this, or I have to go back to work, and now what do I do with Fluffy or Fido or whatever? Jack may actually have some tips or resources for you that you can kind of explore before you make that decision to return your pet, and I've got some amazing news when it comes to the Wiggle Waggle Walk that I'm going to share with Jack that even he doesn't know in just a few minutes. But right now, let's go ahead and take a look at your drive. Nick Aliokini, I think, uh, was part of this yesterday, Dave Joseph. He uh, he mentioned a few ways that you could join our team on the KFI uh, Wake Up Call Wigglers or the Wiggle Waggle Walk. And I, honestly, Dave, I think he pushed us over the top. You're working oh, with a good guy. Oh, no doubt about that. He's the best. <laughs> You'll have to join us sometime, Dave. I would love to. Thank you for the invitation. I Absolutely. Would okay, sounds good. 101 southbound just before Parkway Calabasas here. Look out, uh, look out for a solo vehicle crash. It's a pickup truck into the center divider, and it looks like you're going to see some activity as you make your way through. A downtown LA, the 10 Eastbound at Hoover had a stall. That's been cleared from lanes. And keep in mind, the right lane is closed on the 2 northbound between the 5 and the 134. Shut down until 6 a.m. for electrical work. KFI in the sky helps get you there faster. I'm Dave Joseph. This report is sponsored by Mercury Insurance. Download the DraftKings app and use code SPORTS to get a free shot and millions of dollars up for grabs this week for your first deposit. Minimum $5 deposit required. Eligibility restrictions apply to DraftKings.com for details. This is Chris Collinsworth. Here's what's trending on the iHeart Sports Network, presented by DraftKings. LeBron James is producing a new Netflix drama called Red Ball. The story follows a high school Native American basketball team based out of Chuston, New Mexico. Major League Baseball is extending Trevor Bowers administrative leave for a fourth time. The Dodgers starter is under investigation for alleged domestic violence. He's denied all allegations. And USA Women's Basketball blew out Serbia, clinching a spot in a gold medal game in Tokyo. I'm Missy Jordan. Here's a quick tip to save some cash. Switch to Mercury Insurance. Californians save an average of $677 with Mercury. The sooner you switch, the sooner you'll save. Get a fast free quote today at mercuryinsurance.com. That's mercuryinsurance.com. Looking for your next investment? Want to cash out of stock market risk and volatility? Here are eight reasons to consider NRIA's proven real estate development fund. Monthly cash flow payouts of 10% annualized 
and bonuses to 21% targeted. We strategically locate in lower risk, high demand areas people are moving to. New construction is short on supply. Real estate affords diversification and safety from stock market risk and volatility. We have substantial property assets selling out every month supporting your investment. Our short and long-term strategy provides for steady returns today and major upside targets. Our buildings are socially responsible, environmentally friendly, and pandemic hardened. We are an industry leader with a 15-year proven track record. Hedge against inflation and receive steady cash flow. Start your due diligence at nria.net or call 800-800-1414. That's 800-800-1414. An offer of securities is only made by the NRIA private placement memorandum. Read it first. Past performance does not guarantee future results. NRIA is a real estate development firm. Learn more at nria.net. Summer fun rolls on at San Manuel Casino. Every Thursday in August, San Manuel is giving away a 2021 Maserati Heedley Trofeo or up to $100,000 in cash. That's right. You could drive away in a new car or cash each week. Earn entries using your club Serrano card each time you play and you could be one of our lucky grand prize winners. Catch the thrills all month long at SoCal's number one casino, San Manuel. Details at SanManuel.com. Must be 21. Please gamble responsibly. At Sit and Sleep, we know that people are experts at all kinds of things, except one, how to shop for the right mattress. Right, Dad? Shopping for a mattress isn't something you do every day, or even every eight years. That's why Sit and Sleep has mattress experts with an average of 10 years' experience, and bed match technology that scientifically recommends just the right mattress for you. So for expert advice, trust your sleep to Sit and Sleep. You know, Drew, I'm an expert at other things. Like what? Screaming free! Rick Edelman, number one New York Times best-selling author and founder of Edelman Financial Engines, takes questions on his radio show. Hi, Rick. I have a pension and can take it as monthly income or a lump sum. What do you think is better? Well, the monthly check is only as safe as your employer's ability to pay it. I mean, that will never rise, so inflation will erode its value. Seven, six, you have no access to the principal, and when you die, the money stops, even if you die tomorrow. So we usually recommend the lump sum. So that's what I to do. You want and generate your own income. You have full access anytime, and whatever's left over goes to your spouse or kids. But for some workers, the monthly option is better. So you should meet with a financial advisor to be sure that you're doing what's best for you. That's Rick Edelman, founder of Edelman Financial Engines, with his advice on pension. If you have a personal finance question, Talk to an experienced financial planner at 888 or visit rickedelman.com. When it comes to keeping you and your business safe, Bay Alarm is committed to be the best. With additional safety protocols, like enhanced training practices, protective equipment, and social distancing. Because nothing matters more than your safety. Now, more than ever, Bay Alarm. ACOCACCL 80013. When it comes to the tools in your garage, it's all about lithium your mind on. Plenty of power, maximum efficiency, and a longer life. Introducing Novalist Lithium-Ion Powered Forklifts. All the power and efficiency you need, and essentially maintenance free. With the dramatic savings and overall cost of ownership, Novalist Forklifts pay for themselves over time, and that increases your bottom line. Novalist, revolutionizing the material handling industry one job at a time. What's in your warehouse? Contact us today for a cost analysis at novalistna.com slash save. For nearly 100 years, folks have trusted Blue Scar medicated ointment to relieve the pain and itching of almost any skin irritation. It works for my son's dry itching feet and their jock itch. Bad this rash on my neck? Nothing worse until Blue Star. Blue Star works great on my ringworm without steroids. My wife and I have been using Blue Star for years. It's never let us down. Look for the white box with a blue star in the first aid section. Feel blue star work fast or your money back. People are buying his art because of the name that's attached to it. Because at cocktail parties, you can be like, oh, remember President Biden?